I recently discovered that Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't support high efficiency video coding, or HEVC for short, also known as H.265. Apparently this has been a problem since September of 2016, a memo I wish I would have gotten. And so that leads us into this video. We're going to set up a media encoding server that will ingest all of the H.265 video and encode that to H.264, which is a format that Final Cut Pro 10 should support. But before we can jump right on in, there's a few things we have to discuss first before we can do all the legwork. So for this project, I had originally intended to use Adobe Media Encoder CS6 because I already own that software that I got from school forever ago and it supports 4K video at 30 frames per second. Additionally, it also supports something called watch folders. Watch folders are important because when the software detects that something has changed or a file has been added, it will automatically take that file and encode it to whatever preset you have enabled. However, CS6 does not support MOV files that are H.265 encoded. Now, I did find some like very vague posts uh, that said that it was possible to do with a QuickTime wrapper. However, I was never able to figure it out because all of the information that was av available was pretty ambiguous. And so I decided I'd trade out the Creative Cloud version, which is the latest and greatest, and it turns out that only paid memberships are allowed to use H.265. So I had to ditch Adobe Media Encoder because I'm not really at the point in my life where I can afford that $20 a month. Well, I guess I could, but I choose not to. I'd rather spend it on other things. So that then led me back to the internet to do some research to figure out another approach. And that led me to Handbrake, which is an open source software that is great for encoding video and transcoding and all sorts of other projects that you might have in mind. However, it was kind of difficult to figure out how to set up automated watch folders and automated encoding. And there are some scripts that you can do on Linux and also Windows, and there's a lot more information on how to do it on Linux. And now while that is a good approach, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little lazy and didn't really wanna follow through. So I was gonna see if anybody else had done any of this work. And of course there were Git repositories that had all this set up, which was great. But then again, I had to use Linux, which isn't a big deal because Linux is the ideal operating system to use for this kind of work. But I just wasn't really quite ready to jump there. I wanted to find maybe some other software that was more inclusive because some of the watch folder stuff had been abandoned. So I turned back to the internet again for a third time and didn't really find anything. So I kind of gave up. But then, at the very last second, while exploring Unraid and some of the Docker apps available, I saw Handbrake. And in the description of that Docker, it said that it did watch folders and automated encoding. And thanks to Unraid and that Docker, we can now set up a media encoding server that will be available 24 seven essentially to encode all my video while I do other work on Final Cut Pro. Let's go ahead and take a look at how to set this all up. Assuming you already have Unraid, the first thing we need to do is create two shares. One will be called import, which is our watch folder for Handbrake and where we will dump all camera footage. And the second will be export folder, where Handbrake will automatically put all converted video. Because of my server setup, I'm intentionally choosing not to use the cache disks because in my array, I have SSDs. I'm also choosing to export to NFS and SMB just in case I decide to use a Linux machine or a Windows machine in the future to access this share. Now I just need to create my export folder, which is where Handbrake will put all of the encoded H.264 video. I'm gonna use all the same settings that I did for my import folder to make things simple. After both shares are created, we then need to install Handbrake Docker by Jay Lesage. By using the Community Applications plugin, we can search for Jay Lesage's Handbrake Docker. And we're just gonna install this one because based off the description, it has watch folders and can be configured to automatically encode media as we desire. The container will install pretty quickly. And once it's done, we can go ahead and edit it once it opens on its own. Uh, we could change the network type if we want. However, in this case, I'll be leaving it set to bridge. And then all we have to do from here is add our watch directory, which is gonna be our import share that we created earlier. Next, we're gonna set the output directory to our export share that we created earlier. We can go ahead and ignore the preset for now, but we will need this later. And then I'm going to go down to more settings and then go ahead and look for check interval and change this to 10 seconds 
you don't have to do this, uh, but I'm choosing to for no particular reason. Uh, and that's all the settings we need to make here. So I guess we can just go ahead and hit apply. After hitting apply, it apparently installs now, uh, which is not something I expected, but that's okay, because uh, it doesn't seem to take too long. Once it's done, we will click done, and it appears to be done. So I'm gonna go back to my Docker, click the container to access the web UI, and then I'm gonna go ahead and use a preset. I will be using the YouTube 2160 60 FPS 4K preset. And then from here, I'm gonna to wanna to just make my own personal edits by clicking on the video tab. And then I'm gonna change the encoding speed to placebo uh, because I wanna maximize the quality that's available. And everything else looks good, so I'm not gonna make any more changes. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and do save as, and I'm gonna change the name to something simple like 4K 60 FPS. And I would put it in its own category if it's not necessary. I'm gonna check the default tab, but I don't think this actually works. Click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save again, just in case, uh, because I don't trust the software. Now I'm gonna exit the software. I'm going to stop handbrake. And once it's stopped, we will go back in and edit it. And once we are back in to edit it, we need to change the preset uh, to whatever you named it. So in this case, it's gonna be 4K 60 FPS and then we just want to make sure that we save our settings. So after hitting apply and the container stops again and it actually makes the change and it says it's successful, we're going to want to go back in and verify that the web UI says that it has loaded the 4K 60 FPS. This is, this is crucial because if it does not say, say this, it won't work. And then we're also just going to double check to make sure all our changes are still here and they appear to be. So let's move on to the next part and do a real test. Okay, so after getting Docker installed and making some changes uh, to the actual Docker itself, um, what we're going to do now is drop this H.265 file into our import share that we created way earlier. And once it's done transferring uh, into there, we should see within about 10 seconds that all the CPU spin up and this thing starts cranking away. All right, file transfer complete. So we're gonna watch the export directory and kind of just watch the statistics of the server. And the CPUs are starting to spin up, so that's a good sign. That probably means it's working. And ideally, this thing totally maxes out 100% CPU load uh, for the most work possible. It'd be really cool if we had more CPUs, but that's not something I can support right now. And I think we're just gonna have to sit tight until it's done. Oh man, I regret not starting a timer. That's something I should have done to use it as a benchmark for future tests. Oh well. Oh, it looks like it's done. Uh, so let's go ahead and verify that it is in fact 60 FPS. Thankfully I have VLC installed and this is probably the easiest way to check uh, what the frame rate is as well as the screen resolution. So we're gonna go to window, we're gonna go to media information, and then under the codec details, we can see that the video resolution is in fact 3840 by 2160, and we have the beautiful frame rate of 60 FPS because we should not expect any less for the PC master race. Now that we have all of that done, let's go ahead and take a look at what the process would actually look like. Starting with the camera, I will obviously shoot and record video then drop all of the video files directly into the import share that we created earlier. From there, the server we installed Unraid and Handbrake on will encode the video into H.264 MP4 files, and I will either work on other projects or peruse the internet for a little bit. Once it's done, or I'm ready, I can grab the files from the export share and start working on them in Final Cut Pro. And from here, we'll be able to use 4K video at the glorious 60fps. All right, so this turned out to be a pretty fun project in the end. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoy this video, and hopefully one day in the future we can scale this up to multiple people, multiple files, and even multiple cores, uh, or CPUs actually, you know, 32 cores, 64 cores, whatever it may be, because I think that'd be really interesting to see on a larger scale. So I just want to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.